are so many uh, doctrines, uh, theories as it relates to why we are here, particularly sons of God. Why sons of God are here? There are many messages telling us why we're here, what we should be doing, what is, um, what should be our goals, what we should be involved in. And that is sad. That's sad because the word of God tells us that there shouldn't be five and six different hundreds of different, uh, messages on why the sons of God are here. It really shouldn't. That's very sad because what that says is that we're not getting into the word of God. Those, the doctrines, it can't be 10 doctrines. There's only one. There's only one doctrine. Okay. And so if we allow the scriptures to tell us why the sons of God are here, what the sons should be pursuing, what should be at the heart of sons of God, what we need to be involved in. If we really want to know that it's in the scripture, it's in the scripture. And it's very plain the reason that God saved us and left us here is for the purpose of ministry. Why else? Just think about it, Pastor Pam. Why else? If all he wanted to do was to save people, he did that. Some of us have been saved for 20 years, long time. If all he really wanted to do was just to get you saved, and then that's the end of it, he could just allow you to just get saved and just pass away. But that was the beginning of the plan. The beginning was to procure sons. But just like you got saved, my purpose is to go and get others. That's my purpose. So everything that God has in my path, every resource, the time that I have here, whatever it is, the gifts, the talents, the, the people in my sphere of influence, the job, whatever it is that God has for me while I'm here, it's to that end. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. So it doesn't matter what other people are saying about what you need to be doing, what you should have. You know what I should have? The Holy Ghost, and he gave it to me. That's what I should have. He gave me that on the day of salvation. He gave me the Holy Ghost, and whatever gift, Ephesians 4 say he gave gifts to men. He knew how he wanted to use me, so he gave me that. And everything else that he needs for me to have, he, are, he's, he, he gives it to me. He doesn't tell me to pursue it. No, that's not in the Bible to tell me to pursue what I need. Mm -mm. He said, first of all, you don't even know what you need. I know what you need. I, I know exactly what you need. Don't be worried about tomorrow. You don't even know if you're going to be here tomorrow. And if you are here, it has enough issues of its own. Don't be worried about tomorrow and all that. Worry about right now. Lord, what is it that you want me to do today with what you've given me? That is what the sons wake up with every day. That's it. Not talking about, well, because I'm a king's kid, I should have. I've been born of the spirit, therefore I should have something else. Based on this, this world, whatever God has given and whatever he wants to do, that's his business. But what I need to be concerned with, but am I fulfilling the purpose of real ministry? That's what I need to be asking myself. I don't care if I had $2. Am I fulfilling the purpose of what real ministry is according to the scripture? Am I allowing Christ to influence the people in my sphere? Am I allowing Christ to touch to influence him, the, them the way he wants, and I'm not offering any kind of resistance, am I allowing that to happen? Even at my expense. Even if that means that I'm inconvenienced. Even if that means that I look bad. Even if that means that people talk about me and I'm rejected. Am I allowing Christ, though, to influence those who he has put in my life? He's, a, he's given me influence with, am I allowing him to do it? That's the question. That is the question. So if we want to know what needs to be our pursuit, glorifying God, procuring more sons, letting God touch his people, 
That's what we need to be after. So um, in the book, if we go down to the second to the last paragraph, right in bold letters, it says that Jesus is the only one that is authorized by God to work ministry on the earth. Jesus is the only one. A few things stick out to me about that. The only, that phrase sticks out, and by God. And when it says that Jesus is the only one that is authorized by God to work the ministry on the earth, when you look at authorized, if someone has granted me authorization for something, that alone implies that if I was the one granting um, authorization or access to something, that's telling me that there is a criteria. If Jesus was is the only one authorized by God, that tells me that God has a criteria. If he's the only one being given the access, that means that if I'm granted access to you, Gwen, that means that you met the criteria in order for me to say, okay, here you are. Okay, you get that? So if, if you've been authorized, that means that I have a standard. That's something I'm, I got, I'm looking for. And in order for me to grant you access or to give you authority, you have to meet it. You got to meet the criteria. So what she's saying here is that Jesus was the only one who met it. Only. Only. The only one. There's nobody else. I don't care about it's billions of people in the world. I don't care about that. <laughs> God says, and we're going to see it in scripture, Jesus is the only one authorized to work ministry. So if, if that be the truth, that we know that it is, that means that in order to influence people, if that's what, if that's what ministry is, Christ influencing people, if Jesus is the only one, then that means that there's no other person there's no other spirit there's no other no, there's nothing else granted by god that can get into the heart and to in, in, in order to please him nobody else nothing else no other route there's no charisma there's no level of education that can do it that hollering and screaming and sweating and all of that that has its place. If that's the way you express, you know, we're not preaching against that. If that's the way you express, then that's fine. As long as it's in Christ. <laughs> okay. If Christ's doing it, then that's fine. It's Christ. It's not personality. That's not what he wants us to pursue. He don't want us to say, well, this is how Tanya teach. So surely if I can get it quite just like that, I know I can do it. That ain't it either. That's not it either. No, Christ is the only. Not apostle anybody. Not bishop anybody. Not deacon anybody. Christ. If there's a pursuit, pursue Christ. If you have a pursuit as a minister, let it be Christ. Let it be Christ. If you see Christ, follow Christ. Not personality, follow Christ. Because the Bible said that he's the only one who can get into the heart. Threatenings won't do it. Threatening people that they're going to go to hell and you're going to bust hell wide open and all. Listen, some of that, it sounds good, but that some of that stuff, that don't move people. Christ knows what to say. To get the person's attention. Christ knows that. He, that's why God say all power. I'm giving all the power to my son. He's the only one who knows how to do it. He's the only one with the authority that I gave to do it. And it's not a one size fits all. My parents have three children. And 
you, some of you have multiple children. You don't treat all of them the same. It, it, even in term of, terms of discipline. You, you know that one that you know I need to spank them right here. You know the one that all I got to do is look. And they shivering in their boots. I don't have to do, open my mouth. If I just look, they'll straighten up. And you know the one that you can look all day and nothing. <laughs> that, that don't phase them not one bit. But you know, give me that iPad. Okay, now you have my attention. Hang up that phone. Give me the phone. You know your children. You know which one needs what. God is the same way. Jesus knows. Jesus knows everybody in this vineyard. Everybody. Every soul in the vineyard. He knows the ones who are yet to come. He knows them. And he knows what they need. All he needs is someone to accept that Jesus, you're the only one authorized. You may need to strip him of everything. But stripping Pam won't move her. You can strip Pam of everything she has. And she will still not turn that heart unto you. But if you're set that, oh, that's what that's what'll get her attention. You take all the money, take away her job, call the husband and leave her, throw her out of her house, take the car away, Lord. Do you know that some people they don't care about that? It, it doesn't, it, you haven't touched their heart yet. Jesus does not have their attention any more now than he did when they were rolling in the dough. But we feel like we need to pray that God does that so that they can turn to him. But Jesus says, you don't even know how to pray as you are. You need me to pray. You need me to pray. You don't know what these people need. You don't know these people in this vineyard. I know them. I'm the one with the authority. We must embrace that and close, just close it right there. Just say, Lord, if you're the one with the authority, then I rest in you. I must rest in you. You saved me to minister, but I don't know more than you. I don't have more knowledge and wisdom than you. I don't. I haven't been saved that long to know what's going on in Judith's heart. No, I need you to show me that. If you don't show it to me, I won't know it. You know it. And so we've been saved to minister. That is our purpose for living. That's why I woke up today. That's why God allows you to wake up. That's why you, that's why you got up. So that God can influence someone else through this body. Let's keep going here. After that, it says, if you would embrace this truth, then you might move to a place of power in God. It is Christ in us that works ministry in this world. It's Christ in us. Okay, so now we're seeing fellowship. Christ is the only one who's authorized by God to do it. But she goes on to say, it's Christ in us. Now we see fellowship between the first begotten and all those who come after. Who have the same spirit and the same mission. Jesus allowed God to move and touch people through him. And now look at here. God is in us. He's working the ministry in this world. It's Christ in us that is authorized by the Father to do as he will, as who will, as God will. Do we see that? Christ is in us, but God is the one working. It's his will. It's what is it that you want, God? It's what do you want? As we hear the word, we often say, don't think about husband right now. Don't think about, oh, this is so good. My aunt really need to hear that. I need to send this to auntie so-and-so. No, share the video if, if you will. But when God is talking, 
Discipline yourself to keep that mirror right here. Keep it there because it's the enemy that will try to cause you to push that aside and start thinking about all the other people who might need to hear the word. Don't do that. You must discipline yourself to say, Lord, you talking to me. I'm in here today. Talk to me. Talk to me. Do I believe this? It is Christ in us that is authorized by God, the Father, to do as he will. Therefore, we must move from this knowledge to the life of this truth. So we could know it, we could talk about it, and we can repeat it, but we got to move from there. We got to move from just that knowledge and accept the life that's in that truth, okay? Let's look at Matthew, the 17th chapter, uh, 17 and 1. After, and after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. Are we, are we familiar with that Mount Transfiguration? And was transfigured before them, his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Talking about Jesus. Jesus was transfigured. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with them. Okay, so it was Jesus and three of the disciples. So it's a total of four. But then uh, verse 3 says, Behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking to them. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. He was excited. Yes, it's good for us to be here. If you're willing now, let us make here three tabernacles. One for you. One for Moses, we can make one for Elias. And verse 5 says, and while he was talking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face. And we're so afraid. I reckon I would be too. <laughs> Verse 7. Jesus came and touched them. Now he, Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, be not afraid. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no man except for Jesus. Moses gone. Elias God, they don't see them anymore. When they looked up, they saw Jesus only. So let's look here. I want to hone in on uh, verse, verse 5, the latter part of verse 5, because this is the testimony that the Father has of us as well, okay? We're talking about ministry. He said, this is my son. My beloved son, this is his message. God's message. Okay, this not Jesus going around testifying this of himself. Here, now in this verse, you got God, the one and only God, affirming his one and only son. You have God saying, this is my beloved son, and I'm, well, I'm pleased with him. Okay, we're talking about the authority. So, well, we can see where it came from. This is God himself. He said, this, my son, I'm pleased with him. And then he said, hear him. Listen to him. Watch him. Nobody else did God himself affirm that on the earth. Nobody else. Jesus was the only one. Jesus was the only one God granted that and said, yes, if you hear anybody, hear him. Because he come directly from me. And guess what, church? That's what the testimony is that he have of his people. Here, Cynthia. Here. She's my son. 
Don't you know that was his plan all along? To have many who he can say, listen to Monique. That's my child. Listen, hear her words. Watch her life. If you want to know what pleases me, look at Jesus. That's what God was saying about his son. I authorized him. Listen to him. Hear him. We don't have a different testimony, church. Don't you know that God is saying the same thing? He had the same testimony of us. Wherever you are, wherever you are, on your job, hear. Hear her. Hear him. Don't you know he didn't, he didn't just get joy out of just saying, this is my son, Jesus? Yeah, he, he knew that Jesus was going to start it off. But his great plan was to look on the earth, not just in heaven. I want to look on the earth and see many just like the first begotten. I get joy out of giving the authority to Bonnie. I get joy out of that. My joy, not as a parent, don't you get joy out of just, just giving your, your child? I don't desire to withhold anything from you. you. You belong to me. I get joy out of giving you what you need. I get joy out of giving what I have to you. You're mine. Try to say you, you're mine. We're one. So it wasn't just secluded to the first begotten that here's my son. I'm well pleased with him. God want to say that today about his children today. I'm well pleased. Watch her. Don't you know that's precious, Pastor? For God to be able to say, if you want a clear path to Jesus, you want a clear path, you want to know how to get to heaven, you want to know who I am, I God am, just watch her in every situation. Listen to everything she said. Every time she's, she come up against issues and problems and rejection, just watch. Just look. Watch what she does. I wish you could look in her heart and see that. Look. Listen to the words she uses. Listen to how, watch how gentle he is with his wife. Just look. He said, if you want to know what the body of Christ is like, watch. Just look. That's, that's God's, his, it's always been his purpose for on earth for people to be able to look and see God. He said, show forth your works here on earth so men can see them and do what? Glorify me. That's always been his purpose. <laughs> to be able to say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in heaven, but that's all right. I'm on earth too. Look, watch, just watch her. But we listen to these old watered down gospel. Well, oh, sin, just, oh, well, God knows sometimes you're going to sin. Sometimes you're going to have an off day. Oh, God knows this. What does that do? It tampers the brain. It tampers the pursuit of holiness. And it causes us to be okay with being a stumbling block for people. It causes us to be all right. Well, child, it was all, I'm just having a bad day. You just got to forgive me. That's not holy, and it's not okay, and it's not cute. God called me to be able to say, look at her, listen to her, watch her. Watch him. Look. And if nobody tells you that, you will feel like it's okay to just have off days, off times. And oh, I can just put this down right now. Oh, that's just, child, that's just Belinda. She, she'll be all right. That's just Christine. Sometimes she do it. Sometimes she'll come back around sometimes. What does that say about God? John said, we handled that life. We handled the life. And what do we get from the life that God is holy and in him is no darkness at all? That's what we got about God handling Jesus's life. Come on, church. What 
what, what message are we preaching about God? When people come away from me, do they get, oh, God, ain't no darkness in God. Because every time I deal with Tanya, I just see holiness. Even though we're just laughing and talking and having fun, no these and thousand and Bibles, even when we're just sitting around talking, it's no darkness. There's no dirty jokes. We ain't sitting around gossiping about people. It's just holiness. That's ministry. <laughs> That's ministry. God is saying, don't you know God is just, his heart, his head just getting so big on the throne. Chest just out when he just knows that I can just say, just watch Pinky. You'll get to heaven. Watch Pinky. I don't even have to worry about her. I don't got to worry about that one. She's not, she'll show you how to get there. She's not just going to preach to you. You can watch your life. Any leader loves to have people like that in their circle where, Lord, I better not send them over there to so-and-so. Have harems and everything. You stay in the house. You don't you 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 don't go minister nowhere. You stay right here and watch care. <laughs> you stay here. But it's good to know I can send that over here. I can have her to work over there, out of the country, or, or all the way over on the other side of the world. She gonna go holy, and when she come back, she gonna be holy, and she gonna leave the people holy. <laughs> She's not going to be squandering them out of their money into their pants and all of that. She's going to go and, and do what God tell her to do. And she's going to come out holy. Don't, you, don't that make you feel good as a leader to know, I don't have to worry about that. How much more do you think God feels when he knows what he has as his children? I know what kind of child I have. That one, I can send her anywhere. I can plant him anywhere. He's going to be holy. Our hearts are open.